it's time for the visit with the person of high strangeness. Um, the last, well, I would say five or six shows, they were really deep and um, uh, maybe even burdened your mind. So what I thought we was going to do today, um, ask one of our old friends back, um, old in wisdom and young in age, Kana Shibishan. And what we want to do today is just, just kind of kick things around and make it a fun show and, and lift our spirits and lift our mind. And um, now the opening shot, and maybe we can go back to that for just a minute. Um, one, of the, one of my new neighbors, uh, as you know, I, I am now settled after the earthquake and find a new place to live. And he, um, one of the neighbors gave us these beautiful moon shots uh, to share with you, and it was so incredible. I had never really seen anything like it, but all little bumps and things, and have a few photographs to share with you today, too. But I'm just going to talk until we put that moonshot back up there for you so you can see it. I mean, all the little bumps and everything. And um, where I lived before, we used to have UFOs that I shared with you, and this time it's just the moon. So in the meantime, can we find that opening shot again for a minute? It is so beautiful. That, well, there's the full thing, the full moon. Um, I believe that was one day before the full moon, and um, it was just so, Im I was so impressed with the whole thing and the fact that the neighbor was um, thoughtful enough to share that with all of us. There you go. And I think all throughout the show you're going to see it, but it is just so enjoyable. So now I'm going to introduce you to my guest again, Kano Shibashan, my friend and yours. And so how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. You're always doing pretty good. Well, you know, I had a little situation back in July that kind of got me down for the first time in many, about 35 years. Would you like to talk about that? Uh, we've addressed it on, on yeah, you did. Tom Stahl and I yeah. have addressed it on the show. So if you like, uh, let's go there. Well, it's, it's, uh, it's, I guess you can call it an up subject if you want, but uh, I'm up from it now. I was down for a little Long while. Time, yeah. But what happened was uh, I have a nephew who, in fact, I have four nephews who do firefighting. And one of them was uh, caught in a pretty bad fire on July 10th, I believe, mm -hmm. and was killed along with three other firefighters in the 30-mile fire. And um, it was pretty. It was a pretty difficult uh, situation. I've been through a lot of family dying, but none so in such a horrific way. Yeah. And so, um, what was really interesting, though, I'd like to share if I could, uh, was before someone. Our family's really psychic when it comes to people being born or dying. <laughs> right. And so, about two weeks before we been, I. I had dreams, my sister had dreams, and another sister had dreams, and we all knew someone was going to die because of the type of dream we had. But we didn't know who it was. We knew it was going to be a boy, um, you know, a male. Male, yeah. And so when it happened, it was kind of funny because I was just sitting watching the TV, yeah. and my sister had came up from, shows you how spirit is so yeah. wise. My sister had just came up from California, my youngest sister, and we were supposed to go to the city council to see about getting a few things changed. And they kept putting it off. Two, two, uh, two weeks straight, they put it off. She said, well, what am I doing here? You know, I could have stayed home. You know, I could have been in California, up here in Roslyn, you know. I said, well, there's probably a reason. Yeah. And then we were sitting down watching on the, uh, I think it was the 12th, 11th when we found out. And we were watching the show, and it was talking about a fire. I said, gee, I wonder if any of my nephews are around there. And then the next, um, uh, that night, I found out that uh, the next day, my sister called and said he's one of those that had died. Tom Craven. Tom Craven. And so we went through it, and I just want to say that the town and um, the Forest Service and everyone was just so very helpful to, to, help, mm -hmm. to help his family, because he had two children and a, and a wife, and then his mother and father. His father, of course, is my brother Willie, who was ex-mayor of Rawls and Washington, and his um, wife, Virginia, and unknown to anybody, both of them have heart trouble. Oh. And so I was really kind of concerned about But my sister found, well, that's why she was there. Yeah. Because she would have been there and that. So that happened. And um, 
got through it, but what was, uh, what was really neat, too, was I do have this belief in uh, life after death and that they do live. And so um, Tom came to me, my nephew came to me a couple of nights after, gave me some information about what happened. And then I followed the paper to see what the Forest Service was going to say. Yeah. And it was just really accurate. But not only that, something really happened that my sister recorded. Because she's not a skeptic, but she's not a, I don't know what to say. Some of the things I say, she thinks I'm crazy, but she has her own dreams, and she knows there's such a thing as psychics and having pre, you know, pre, uh, mm -hmm. precognition. And so she was sitting in the living room, and I was sitting in the kitchen, going in the kitchen about 25 feet away, and we were watching the program after he had died and everything, and we were watching something on the fire. And there was a remote, there was a table like this right in front of her. And the remote was here, and she was over there. The TV is right where the young man is there on camera. And she said, uh, she called and said, Kay, come here. And I said, why? She said, well, the remote just clicked the TV to yeah, another right. station. Yeah. And I said, OK, girl. So I came and stood about here. And she's way over there, the remote's still here. And I look at the TV, and it's on a different station. Mm -hmm. And what was so interesting was I said, let's check the station. I bet you there's something that Tom liked on it or something. Well, it happened to be um, station on comics, which I didn't know he watched, because I didn't really keep up with him that much, you know. Comedy Channel. Comedy Channel. And then it, had, it switched to, which was really neat, it switched to an advertisement. And on the advertisement was Michael Jackson. Another hip hop lady, I forgot what her name was, and another one. Well, I don't watch those things at all, but my nephew was a DJ. Uh -huh. And so I said, I know that's Tom. I just yeah. know that's Tom. And so I said, when his daddy comes, I'm going to ask him what station he liked to watch. Yeah. And so he came the next day. And uh, I said, Willie, I said, what station did your son like? And he said, comedy, or, not comedy, it was another station. And I said, because I told him what happened, he said, oh, that's Tom. Tom, yeah. No, no, unknown to, to me at the time, I had just gotten to the new place, and I had hung a poster mm -hmm. um, of Eddie Murphy on the wall, and uh, I hadn't quite gotten used to the height of the mm -hmm. thing there. And, and so, so I, something kept coming around the corner there, and for a minute there, I thought it was that <laughs> I caught the Eddie Murphy poster, you know, from huh. here. And, but then I realized it wasn't, and then when we described it, it turned out that... It's been my nephew. He stopped mm -hmm. and paid me a visit. But not the one that was really amazing to my sister, because she's a little skeptical. Uh, she, sa she said that what happened was, after, we, after I stood there and I watched all this, I went back in the kitchen and she said, well, if that's Tom, then I'm just going to hug him. And she went out like she's going to hug somebody that's not there right. And she said this electrical charge when she reached him. Reached wow. out like that, just went through her body. And she's so impressed that she went up and typed it up on the computer. Oh, wow, yeah. So that was, that was really exciting. That was exciting. And other than that, I guess things have been pretty good. I had a... Uh, Thank you for sharing that story. Yeah, that was what well, was, to me, really, it helpful. It was really yeah. helpful. I knew he had a little problem, um, you know, going on with the type of problem that yeah. made him go. And he had his wife he was worried about and all that. So that made it really... It really helped everybody when they yeah. found out about that. But I haven't been doing too much. Um, planting a little flowers, uh, trying to change a lean-to to a shed. A and what? A lean-to. <laughs> wooden lean-to. It, it's a, uh, oh, a it was a covering that was leaning. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it was a leaning lean to, to the other woman's a yard. <laughs> a lean leaning six it. inches to <laughs> the other woman's yard. And I was concerned because the woman's 93, and I was, I was concerned she may die in her and I know her son, and I thought he wouldn't like that eight inches of mess on his yard. Yeah. And so I really wanted to get it done. And so finally, my I started, and I did a bad job. So my brother came in and saved me. Saved you, and yeah. we got it done after two uh, months. We took some old doors because I didn't have any wood. The woman let me use most of the wood from hers. It was about 60 years old, and and on the sides I didn't have no money for any wood. So I said, hmm, I got these old doors. My brother brought me. So I stripped them painted them, stenciled them, and verithanged them. It took two months. 
and used them for the wall. There's a word for that, and the what? only reason I know this word is we had problems. Uh, um, it's called cannibalizing. Okay. Um, because uh, with the new place, with the new regulations, and uh, I've talked about that before, is being psychic, it makes no difference. You can do not know what they want, what the county wants from you. So yes. instead of just <laughs> letting you know or giving you a blueprint, you just have to muddle your way through it. Yes. So we had to cannibalize oh, okay. the, the wood. In other words, you tear it down and you yeah. really use it. So yeah. well, that's what I, I did. We did a good job. I too. learned a new word. Yeah. Yeah. So that was fun. Um, I'm presently at the farmer's market in a little booth there, uh, and the reason that was set up there so people could come and visit and give us story ideas, and and we're going to see how it goes for a little while, but as of right now, I'm still at the farmer's market. And different friends, new friends, uh, strangers, till they come talk to me, walk to the door, and um, I want to show you some pictures that a, a, a lady brought me. and. Um, I wanted to share that with you. Now, she told me the whole story about these plants here. But from what I understand, they are prehistoric and they only grow in two places. They only grow in two places in the country. And I believe that Oregon is one of them, and I don't remember the name of them. But boy, are they pretty. Do you know the name of them? You don't oh, know the name? Oh, I forgot. You know, I wouldn't. Uh, prehistoric, huh? Huh? Prehistoric. Prehistoric, yeah. She told me the whole story, and I have another one here. The lady's name is Mary Fisher, so I want to tell her thank you um, for sharing these with you. And uh, have have a wonderful name, and of, I wouldn't be me if I remembered names, <laughs> you know. I think it's one of my trademarks. And then the other one that she brought, um, I want to talk about the Cooley Dam after a while. Of course, she didn't know that, but she brought these pictures of the Cooley Dam. I, I'm holding it so good. Look at that. So now if I, if I drop it, I, I'm going to just keep talking. It looks so nice. I got two of them, so <laughs> I can see what Barney, my director, is doing. So whenever he gets ready to drop it, he, he just does wonderful things. But anyway, so this Larry Mary came, and she says, I got something to show you. And she brought these, like I said, these pictures of the Cooley Dam. Now, um, I'm going to put this here. Now, if, if we could get a full shot of this and leave it on there for a while, because there is things that you can see in it. Yeah. Um, we found... An elephant? An elephant? I don't know, right there, the light. Maybe it's your head that's in the way. No, it's your head. No, over here. <laughs> but if you, if you can see, if uh, it's an elephant right here. As uh, Lillian was showing them to me, I was looking, and the more I looked, the more I saw. And then she saw it, and then her granddaughter saw it. And then there was a gentleman here. He looked like, oh, I don't know, maybe of uh, Hindu energy. Uh, his head all wrapped in a white band, a long beard. And then over here I saw an angel, which to me made me think that possibly Grand Coulee Dam has a lot of protection over it. It needs it. And it's going to need it. <laughs> and look at all the things you saw. I did mm -hmm. see the elephant, but uh -huh. then I saw an alien. Oh, that's what it was. You saw an alien yeah. there. That's what it, it was. Yeah. big face. Yeah, so we think it's being protected by a lot of sources, a lot, a lot of, of sources. energies. Mm -hmm. And so there's this one, and then we mm -hmm. have another one. Um, I'm not sure if it's on the inside, on the inside of the dam or not, and it's got Nothing stuff in it too. I think it was inside the dam, yeah. And it's just wonderful photographs. I just couldn't tell if that was the top or the bottom, but I guess it must be, like you said, the reflection of the water mm -hmm. that you see up here. And it had a, here I saw a sort of a sun, but as I looked at this I saw more Egyptian pyramid energy. Mm -hmm. So my feeling is that the designer of that dam uh, had a past life around Egypt and worked on the pyramids because there's so much pyramid energy on there. Mm -hmm. Just really strong pyramid energy there. And then we have another one that I think it's an aerial or something. And um, it had things in it too. Mm -hmm. You could do that for fun when you're bored sometimes. Just take a picture and just sit and look at it and 
just keep, you know, don't be looking hard for nothing. Just look. And then when you start seeing it, keep looking because it'll make uh, picture, uh, pictures. I do a lot of psychometry, and um, the more you hold something, more something comes out. Because right now there's something up here, too. Okay, Starting don't to move it. There. I won't move it. Sorry. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot in that picture, but that one really had it. The yeah, first picture was loaded with things. And then, and then there's, and there's another one here. I'm going to overlay this one here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure the orange part is probably the flash. Okay, mm -hmm. probably, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, there was another one. I couldn't find it or either. She just didn't give it to me. And I thought that was so, I don't know if it's the aerial or what. Hmm. It looks like it might be. But there's a man there right there, if you can see it. He's got shades on, I know. And he's got a brim, a hat brim and everything in it. So that's real exciting too. Exciting, yeah. Yeah. But I think it's really great when people come and you know and bring things yeah, isn't and that to sweet? share and it's neat. And uh, it all comes in the high strangeness category. It's a beautiful dam. Mm -hmm. it's, if you ever get a chance to go in, I've been in it many times. It's beautiful. Well, I have never been there before, but oh, I do it's know really that. Beautiful. Yeah. I know that. I read some stories, and uh, I had talked. To Sun Bear. Mm -hmm. uh, did you ever meet Sun Bear? No. Um, he's no longer with us. Oh. He's a Native American from the Spokane area. And um, he bought quite a bit of property uh, on, in the Spokane area there because there's a lot of caves and things oh. that he wanted to open to everybody, not just a selected few. And so we was talking about the fact that when they built the Cooley Dam, that they had to alter riverbeds and they everything. Did. and. It was really kind of criminal, yeah. you know. And uh, but there's a lot of UFO activity there. Oh, okay. Just a lot. We have lots and yeah, and strange lights and mm -hmm. um, I would think to the last six, seven years, every month there are reports from the Cooley oh, Dam. I didn't know. No wonder the alien showed up in the picture. Well, yeah, it didn't surprise <laughs> me at all. I didn't know that. I didn't yeah. know that. Um, do you have any opinion on the? Affairs of the world? Opinion on affairs of the world? I kind of wish I didn't have any. <laughs> uh -huh, yeah. Uh, I don't know if there are opinions, but um, and when I think about the affairs of uh, what seems to be in front of the newspapers and the media, I'm just really saddened. It's really yeah. saddened. Um, it's like uh, snowballs started rolling. Yeah. And it doesn't look like it's going to stop. <laughs> yeah. And just one thing after another. I mean, it's going to boom, boom, boom. You're like, just like just that. boom, boom, boom until when you wake up, you're going to wonder what hit you, you know? <laughs> yeah. And so um, I tell my daughter, and, uh, one thing I taught my children, and I hope that they learned it, was to always, always question. And you can question me in a respectful way. Mama, mm -hmm. that is, yeah. <laughs> and when you get a certain age, but always question things. Don't take things of just because someone says them. I don't care who says it. Yeah. Um, be careful how you question a teacher. I mean, you know the time and place and, and a method to t you know to questioning. Yeah. And so I have a daughter that's living with me now who is really um, very good at that, much better than I. And then she has much more. Uh, her memory is just excellent. She's always had a brilliant memory. And we sit and talk about the affairs of the world. She's sad, too. But we, I do believe that things have a purpose, yeah. a, a high purpose. Yeah. And so no matter what's going on, I think there's a deeper reason for it and a better reason for it, even though it may seem horrible. You know, it's like you have an earthquake and it destroys things. And, but yet, when they rebuild. That's right. When they rebuild. So on me in the hole was a good thing because I'm not sick <laughs> right. anymore. Right, and oh, not only that, you've got a bigger place. You got a nice place. Uh, you have a wonderful mm -hmm. place, and you probably would have never got a move from there had that never, never happened. See? I have wonderful new neighbors, uh, yeah. and they bring things. You do have wonderful neighbors. I met a couple mm -hmm. of them. Yeah. So I think out of all this, that's coming, which is heavy. It's heavy. Uh, it's going to be some beautiful things coming after it's all over, which I think mm -hmm. will take a while, but I, I really believe that. Yeah, you know, it's like I, I, a few weeks ago, I, I sent in, uh, I turned in my, my trip show, you know, mm -hmm. from this quick trip I made, and we were talking about the fact that uh, 
um, Monica uh, Ryan Smith, she says, well, you know, if some bothers you, just think of it. It's just a cloud, you know, but this one is going to dump. <laughs> and even if it dumps on you, you know, just wait a little while and yeah. just clean up the mess and, and say, wow, I have a, a crevice here I didn't yeah. know I had, you know, and just just cool. kind of go from there. Mm -hmm. Also, there's a um, saying, and it happens to be out of the Bible, but it doesn't really matter. I'm sure you can find it in other philosophies or in other religious books. And I tell my kids this whenever we hit something really rough, and it is, this too shall pass. Mm -hmm. And I just do believe that nothing stays the same. So it's not going to stay like that. That's right. It's going to go, it's going to get better eventually. Well, but, mm -hmm. you know, so that's what I have to tell people. Don't, don't say, oh my God, I don't think I'm going to make mm -hmm. this. This is horrible. I think I don't want to make nap. No, it's going to pass. But um, just keep your eyes open, keep your ears open, and know that uh, freedom is the greatest thing you can have. Don't give it up. Easy. Yeah, that's why the name of the show today is called Things Ain't What They Used To Be. They ain't like they used yeah, to be, hardly anything. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, it music has really <coughs> changed, you know? Think mm -hmm. about how the music, because I found an old 45. Mm -hmm. Now that's going back, you know, those little I small ones? I remember those, yeah. And I've hit it because it's so old, and then it, I played it, and it doesn't have quite the wonderful sound that the new music has. Yeah, but I don't know if you, um, I, I'm not, really all that crazy about rap, mm -hmm. um, but I, I do listen to it occasionally. Mm -hmm. I listen to a lot of music. Mm -hmm. And what I found is they bring in back some of the old records that were on the 45s oh. as backgrounds to do, to do the rap, but actually what that is is a dialogue yeah. more than anything. Um, and it originated in Jamaica. The uh, Jamaican DJs would, uh, while something was playing, they would, they would um, they would rhyme, you know, they would mm -hmm. announce their programs and things. And then uh, later in the New York area, they w young people would stand on the street and like a DJ, you know, mm -hmm. just sort of sort of have their dialogue, you know, yeah. in a musical sense. Well, you know, 25 and years that's what, ago. That's what rap is. Well, 25 years ago, rap isn't new. I'm sorry, no. young people, no, rap isn't not. new. Because when my children were growing up, they're about 15, they had, I have found the record. Mm -hmm. And there's a rap. It was rap. Mm -hmm. All they did was talk song. Yeah, it's a dialogue. Yeah, it's a dialogue. Mm -hmm. so, so now it's, it's, now it's called yeah, rap. Yeah, it's rap, mm -hmm. but it's not new. It's yeah. just the way some of the way words they say and how the sentences they say are a little new. But uh, and then you know, there's old saying that there's nothing new under the sun. That's right. So that's why we <laughs> wear bell bottoms again. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. I saw a lady yesterday. Oh, she had did on a pair really? of bell bottoms. I said, Wow. Oh, oh no. You saw her too, and I made mention. Bell bottoms, yeah, they're back. Bell bottom jeans. Yeah, I yeah. remember when uh, my kids were small and they went to Disneyland. I made, I sold four, five pairs of bell bottoms. Bell bottoms. And I made one for my son. That was the craziest thing. Because mm -hmm. my son is cancer, 16th of July, and he is conservative. And I don't know why I thought he would wear what I was making. But, but bell bottoms, that's what was. Yeah, but the color. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> I made him a brocade, a maroon brocade, <laughs> bell bottoms. You know, he was so sweet. He wore them once. Did he? Oh, that's <laughs> wonderful. And they disappeared. I never saw And now that I, he's grown up and I mm -hmm. watch how conservative he is, and I thought back, I said, I was off. I was so far. <laughs> but, but everything is perfect for the moment. It was perfect Well, it gave me practice, time. but I mean, that was really wild to even think he would even want those. Even thinking on her. Because he's always been conservative. Yeah. Now, now, understand you also went to Spokane and worked a psychic fair there? Yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. I did a feminine spirit fair. Oh. And it was well attended, uh -huh. well ran, and it was really, I didn't get a chance to hear the speakers. Patty Duke was one of the big ones. Oh, really? Uh -huh, and I really have admired mm -hmm. her over the years. But I didn't, I did, you know, reading, so I didn't really get a chance to meet too many people they had. But something again happened, and I know we're not, we're just talking about things that happened to me, and a lot of psychic things happened to me. And I was sitting in the booth, and I had a picture of my mother, my grandmother on both sides, father and mother's side, decided they're my female mentors because they're mm -hmm. all psychic. And um, so I had them kind of right here, okay? And I'm back here reading, and I hear this noise and everything falls down. Oh, yeah. yeah Just yeah. crashed, you know. I said, mm, that's weird. When I'm reading, so what, you know, I don't care. I didn't pick it up. 
Someone came along about 25 minutes, fixed it for me. I don't even know who it was. And then about 15 minutes after that, the booth, uh, there's a booth here, and then one after that, all the pictures fell off the wall. Mm -hmm. It fell right off the wall. And we were wondering, what was going on? It, it was wonderful, but it was about three-fourths. Uh, the day was almost over. We had a couple hours left. And then we were sitting there, and about a half hour later, we heard this glass fall way down there mm -hmm. crash. So we just thought it must have been this powerful feminine energy. Mm -hmm. That's how we explained it away. Well, you have to explain some kind of way because, you know, <laughs> it, it, the first instinct is to get upset about things. And yeah. I'm, oh, I'm good for that. You're I, good, huh? Yeah, especially in the studio. I come here and I, and I think I have it all figured out, and then wham, <laughs> one little thing in the whole story changes, but I'm much better than I used to be. Are you? Because on hindsight, I learned that, like, if we turned into shows a certain way, in some kind of way, they got turned around, mm -hmm. and uh, s and eventually it turned out that had they played on a different day, they wouldn't have made sense to the oh, viewers. I see. And so I'm pretty laid back. You're learning, mm -hmm. become flexible, yeah. going with the flow. I'm pretty laid back on that. Now the the, the, the other thing, I have a new thing here. Um, Tom Stahl's mother sent a car for me to drive. Okay. And it's, we call it the Beast. It, it's an old green 74 Fury and I'm, I'm driving it. But it just, it just doesn't want to start right. Okay. So one of the friends um, worked on it and it's doing much better now than it was. But in order to start it, I, and you were there yes. today, I have to sit in it. I have to sit in it straight. If I slouch, it isn't going to do it. I have to sit straight up. And then, uh, sh then I have to align myself with the car. And then I say, come on now, come on now. And then I turn it. One, two, three. And boy, if I miss that third one, it doesn't want to do it. So I have to be in, I have to become the car and yeah. I have to go yeah. places. <laughs> when we get old cars, you got to do that. You know, we used to talk yeah. to our cars. Yeah, but I mean, this one there. Yeah, and you got to talk to it. It cranks right up, yeah. you know. That's what we did. We talked to our cars. Yeah. I didn't talk to the car I got. Yeah, but if you panic, you it, flood yeah, it, it. won't work. It, it won't go anywhere. It won't anywhere. work because the energy's not going in there. It's going zoom. Yeah, yeah. so. We used to have old, do you have to, I'm going back to the 50s, 40s, and we had an old Model T. And we had a steep road we had to go through when we were going to a show. And we had about eight kids in the back of it, <laughs> two in front. We packed all. And that thing didn't want to go. And we'd say, come on, come on, just a little further. Just a little, and it would go. Said, come on, come on, start, start. And then those in the winter time, Because, you know, at that time, I don't know what was wrong, but the motors got cold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they didn't want to start. And then you had to crank, too. We had to crank. The car had to crank. <laughs> and this car wouldn't start. <laughs> so we all get around it and say, start, start, start. <laughs> Pretty yeah. soon. Yeah. I'm going to have to have some of your coffee. Go right ahead. Because <coughs> I have can, a little... Can, can you make it? Yeah, if you'll just give me... I've, I've been hiding <coughs> the coffee. There you go. And, it's, and, the, and the, the cars have always got us home, but we talked them home. We really did. We talked them home. Because, yeah. you know, we couldn't afford really um, good cars. Now, just supposing things in like they used to be. You had eight children in the car, no seatbelts. <laughs> if you, get, if you, if you, if you yeah. got caught now... You would have to pay eight yeah. tickets for not wearing a seatbelt. And you know, I think about that. Do you? Yeah, I think about what would my mother and dad done. They'd had to leave some of us home. <coughs> mm -hmm. That's true. So. So going forward <coughs> in the world, is, is that to your liking or are you? <coughs> hmm? Well, I can talk while you cough. Um, <coughs> We've Go ahead. It, they make wonder, fun. it makes wonderful bloopers. We did um, a coughing show one time. Everybody was coughing. Thing on here. Yeah. And <laughs> so, yeah. Hey. And <coughs> so we just coughed to the whole show. And I actually was Mike Wally Walter, the comedian. And I had this when I still had the obstruction in my neck. And I was coughing. And to offset a little bit, he coughed right along with me. I thought that was so <laughs> cool, yeah. Mike Wally Walter. Mm -hmm. I understand he's still uh, uh, quite active in the in the in the comedy scene, you know, in this area. Mm -hmm. So I lost my thought here. 
It's almost winter time. My voice should lose your thought. Wonderful, right? Wonderful, yeah. The person of high strength is here. So, do, do you have any projects for the winter, or you just set it out? Oh, no. I'm very anxiously looking to going home and chopping two cards of wood up and stacking wood. Mm -hmm. I <coughs> actually. As soon as I get there. I can comprehend cords of wood now. I have a wood stove in my new place, and I had one cord of wood, and that was. Uh, I didn't have to chop it or anything. Oh, that's Just neat. looking at it made me tired. <laughs> <laughs> well, so. I like doing it. Mm -hmm. I really love doing it. I have brothers, but they stay so busy. They couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. And then um, I love it. I love the feeling of touching the wood, handling the wood. I love trees, mm -hmm. you see. And so that to me is represents a tree, and then it represents a tree being broken down and burnt to give me heat. So I really feel... Yeah. A spiritual connection with it. When I do it, I actually feel like I'm having a spiritual experience, and that's why I love chopping the wood. Oh, wow, I hadn't thought of that. But I had got a whole new appreciation for wood after the porch, you know, this, this porch experience, because, of course, I don't know how to do this. And so the neighbor goes there, and he gets these long boards, and it's just hanging out the back of the truck. And then to see the people create something out of just the those boards. long boards. And, and the price, that was the other thing I said, oh, wow, you know, I can see why it's real expensive because it's getting so rare. So that sort of changed my relationship to, uh, to the wood again. Well, talking about things aren't the same, aren't like they mm -hmm. used to be, ain't like they used to be, that's yeah. for sure. When I was um, about 35, I guess, <clears throat> my husband and my six children we would go to the woods, mm -hmm. and a person gave us a whole acre, well, a half acre of uh, trees, mm -hmm. and told us we could have it if we cut it down, mm -hmm. and they got off the property. So the children and I and my husband would go, and we'd saw the wood with the chainsaw. Then we'd cut it, you know, into kind of, you know, rounds. Then we would split it, mm -hmm. and then we would stack it, uh, you know, we'd rent a U-Haul truck, and then we'd sell cards of wood. Oh, my. And guess how much it was? What? $15. A cord of wood? And now I pay $250 for a cord of wood. I I, it's hard on me. Oh, my. I thought, I guess I was lucky. I paid 130 and For I a card? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you're lucky. Lucky. Yeah. That, in the city? Yeah. That is amazing. I mean, is that's it? cheap. That's really cheap. Yeah, see, no. so, so here again, negative and positive. Yeah. I thought it was horrible. Now you tell me how good it was. Well, it is. I, last, what, two, <coughs> three years ago, I paid 225 Wow. And then they stole it. I remember that. <laughs> they stole my wood. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy, I, I don't believe in stealing, so it was really hard on me. And I really don't believe in stealing somebody's wood because I use it for heat. Mm -hmm. Though I have oil, I use the wood for the cook stove, so I don't have to. So I can cut expenses, you know. And... When we came along, that leads me to a story. Yeah, but before I want you to clarify, I don't, uh, I don't uh, clarify. I don't believe in stealing. I th do you think I don't anybody believe in really stealing. is? Yes, I know people think it's fine. Yes, I know people who think stealing is fine. It's okay. It belongs to them anyway, because mm. they have a right to everything. You don't know anyone like that? No. Well, I know enough for you. Uh -huh. And I'm not looking for an <laughs> experience, for so cancel you that. Don't have to. I know them. I mean, I personally yeah, know them. Oh, so. yes, that's not rare. Yeah. So now we go to your story. But um, anyway, talking about how wood is so very precious to people, it used to be, for heating. A long time ago, my dad, he was 70, and he's been dead 39 years. So he'd be about 105 right now. He was about 70 years old. And... He used to chop wood, and mostly we had wood that people tore down. He'd tear mm -hmm. buildings down, and then he'd uh, saw the wood up, and we'd help saw the wood up. But um, I was grown, and uh, he'd sawed up a big pile for winter because he had wooden coal stove. And somehow the wood got caught on fire, and my dad found out that the next door neighbor did it. Oh my. And that's, a, that's like stealing a horse in cowboy country. 
is serious you don't do that's real serious you don't do that so anyway my dad found out about it and i just happened to be in the alley at the time he was talking to the gentleman who did it and i remember him saying that my dad is not a violent man i've never seen my dad fight ever ever in life um and he said why he said mr salsa why did you uh, set my wood pile on fire, and the man said, I did, and by the end of the dit, and that was the end, the man was on the ground. Yeah. But he was lucky because um, setting someone's wood on fire back then, if he would have hurt the man seriously, he would have got away. Got away with it, yeah. Uh, now, now, so we've been talking about wood and stoves and yeah. all kinds things of things. Things aren't like they used to be. Yeah, but now, now, you can really bring it in the present, knowing what we know, um, by next year, things ain't like they and are be today. Like <laughs> and, quick um, and quick changes. And quick changes. Uh, well, actually, I would think that here in, in very shortly that unless we learn how to share and ask, and we could run into problems where because people just don't have anything. Yeah. Um, you know, I was talking to a, a lady the other day, and she said that she had to go to the welfare office to. Uh, to get something, and they actually have signs uh, on the wall. You have 349 days, or 300, and they count down the days. Can you imagine the pressure that puts on a person if, if, they, if for some reason they just cannot I, do anything? And when she was saying that, I, Lillian, I, I couldn't hardly believe it. Yeah. That it's so sad. Uh, well, you know, it's, that it has come to I that. I mean, not only that, it came to that. But that an agency would dare to do that to someone. Yeah, the, the mental, to, the mental to, to do the mental yeah. cruelty that brings, yeah. knowing that you only got 265 days to feed your child. Mm -hmm. You only got 265 days to figure out where you're going to live. Yeah. I mean, this is mental cruelty it and is. programming. Mm -hmm. And I don't know who thought it up, but those are... Um, we're, I'm going to go way back again, like things ain't like they used to yeah. be. Um, my, I had sisters and myself and other people around us who fought against things like that and marched against things like that right. and changed things legally 40 years ago uh, to keep yeah. that from happening. Yeah. And what was happening was the uh, welfare problem. Yeah. I was on welfare many times, off and on during between divorces, and um, the welfare was much is much better now than it was. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like it was like night and day. Now you tell me what you're saying. I think they're slipping way back. Yeah. But um, they used to do things like, <laughs> God bless them. They would come into your house without any warning. They had the right to do that. Yeah. Um, in fact, being old now, I can tell them what I do. They can't do anything to me because I didn't do anything. But you couldn't have anything. You couldn't have a TV. Mm -hmm. You couldn't have a really nice radio. Yeah. And if you, they saw it, they deducted that from the check that you had for you and your kids to live, even if someone gave it to you. And even if you got the pawn shop for ten dollars, yeah. they took the book price on it. Yeah. And then you couldn't have a man. You couldn't have a man staying with you because that was a no-no anyway. A uh, no-no just religiously, but with the welfare, oh no. So, honestly, I was. I didn't have a man staying with me. I didn't have any TV. So you know what I do? Huh? I would actually have people bring their stuff over before the worker came. When they found the worker was coming, they'd have the kids run the stuff over to me, I, and I did it proudly. Because that's demeaning, yeah. and that's what's happening right now. That was yeah. 40 years ago. We would go into the well. I had I remember a welfare woman saying, hmm. the man came and said, well, you didn't. I didn't get my check, and if you don't like it, if you don't do what I say, you'll never get a check. Mm -hmm. The attitude of the workers then were terrible, and they're so much better now. They're I'm so not much sure better. about that. Um, well, they used to be. I'm not sure about that. On, <laughs> they used to be. In my travels, I talked to some people, and it's almost getting back it, it, to Could this slip entitlement it back. issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, no. and all this compassion here, we, s we raised all no. this money. You know, f uh, we s you see, the problem is here. We have to have a total crisis yeah. to be loving and giving. Yes. Or it has to be Christmas. Yeah. 
Well, there's times it's neither. Yes, true. And so, so I think people make it as complicated for people as they can, so they just get tired and say, well, and when you count unemployment, we're going to have so much unemployment here, here in this mm -hmm. upcoming year, but w what it is, when they count the unemployment rate, they can only count the people that's in the system. So once you're done with that, oh. and once you no longer collect, you no longer count you're it. You're not counted. So, so it's very deceiving to hear the rate, because only if you're in the system. So when they're talking about you have uh, less than half of people on welfare, well, that's because they're not in the system. They're the homeless people. They're the starving I people. See. They, uh, they're not in the system. But they're yeah, not getting paid. Yeah, that's what I mean. So, yes. so you no longer count. Counted. And I don't think that's what people 30, 40 years ago we had in mind uh, when we wanted to give people a helping hand. Oh, no, it wasn't. You know, it wasn't. And and, but it's going backwards. I can see it. Um, mm -hmm. Another thing that I, I see going really backwards to me, like I said, I was on welfare, so I'm a product of uh, living in the projects, and I'm very thankful I was there and had the opportunity to live there so I could get a chance to come out of it. Mm -hmm. And I don't see it, this happening to young people now. Can't they're, do it. They, they're not going to have the opportunities like I had. Um, once someone was telling me just recently, which made me sad again, that uh, I think it was my granddaughter, that if you happen to have a child and get on welfare, that within six months, mm -hmm. you got to go look for a job. Mm -hmm. And what made me sad was before she told me this, I was reading a sociological report on the damage that happens to these children in daycare. I yeah. mean, the, this is a sociological report done by the state and the yeah. federal government. And yet this, they're here putting these kids in the daycare at six months and making the mother go look for a job. Honestly, the jobs that they're going to be finding are, you know what they're like. They're not, uh, they're not going to pay <coughs> daycare. Because yeah. daycare is running from 300 to 900 dollars a month. Yeah, when when I was a single mom, I worked. I paid 50 cent an hour. I used to babysit three kids for 40 dollars a month. A month, yeah. And now so it's 400 dollars a kid. Yeah, but you, you, I was at the airport. Things ain't what they used to be. Neat. I told my girlfriend Gypsy when I came back from Europe. I said, you know what? I have a business proposition for you. Let's put the money together and we buy an espresso card. Mm -hmm. And she looked at me and and she uh, she was really open-minded, you know, with my uh -huh. craziness there. And she looked at me and she says, "Well, Lillian, what makes you think anybody in their right mind would pay you a dollar for a cup <laughs> of coffee?" And she no. wouldn't do it. So here it is, a few years later. Okay, I'm at the airport in Seattle, and do you know they had Expressos that was five dollars yes. and thirty-five oh, yeah. cents. That's right. So, an average person that has really no skills per se is going to take one hour work to have one espresso. That's right. Go figure. Yeah, an espresso is really big. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like uh, not the big. coffee, but <laughs> I mean the <laughs> business big. is big. It is. Yeah. It's really, especially in the w Seattle area. Yeah. Now, so when you go, to, when you go to the store, I mean, say you have two or three mm -hmm. children, how do you feed your children? Um, do you think that people, thirty, well, maybe not forty, <laughs> well, but thirty-five years ago, I can safely <laughs> say that, thirty-five years ago, we, we looked at things and we said, oh my God, it's never, you know, this is so great. And um, do you think, as a people, we've uh, we went forward? Or? Well, I think we went forward. It's like you go um, five feet forward, but three you come back, back three feet backwards after that, and I think that's what's happening now. It's, three feet uh, so it looks like we've lost all that we used to struggle and yeah. uh, march for and yeah. protest for and pray and yeah. cry for, but we haven't. Yeah. Because I can see with my children that some of the things that, uh, the opportunities they have because of what we did. Like one of the things is my daughter was one of the first uh, pregnant teenagers to be able to go to school because of the 
things that got put in place because of the struggles that people like my sister and I and other people in mm -hmm. Seattle did. And now they have schools for pregnant teenagers and they even take their kids to school. Uh -huh. I had to babysit her kid so she could go to school. So that's still in place. There's certain things still in place. Uh -huh. that, but some things are backward, like the rent. Oh, you know, like the making these p parents. Uh, I agree that some parents don't want to um, be parents, uh, you know, to the mm -hmm. fact that they should go to work. But I think we have to train them for jobs that will pay for daycare, pay for rent, pay for medical. It's a big one. Oh, yeah. I that just, is a mm -hmm. huge one now. They cannot make enough money. They can't get the jobs that will pay medical because they do temporary jobs. Uh, right, and that's going to happen more and more now, especially here oh, yeah, in the upcoming employment. year. But now it's this really double-edged sword. And uh, so supposing you don't have the money to take your child to the doctor, they can charge you a child neglect and abuse. They do. So how do you, uh, how do you even that out? I don't know that it'll even out. You just have to do the best you can and um, hope it doesn't, you don't have a worker that does that because um, that's a biggie. If they have to go to work, well, right now they give them so much medical for so long, and I don't know how long that is. But here in this area, <clears throat> a lot of the doctors don't take uh, medical That's what you're telling so me. So you still can go to the doctor. That's now, what you're telling it me. It would make more sense to me to keep the family together and, and help with the maintenance of the family instead of taking the family, it's, it's breaking up the children and giving them to different foster yeah. homes and paying four or five times the amount. But that's where they're at now. Yeah, but... You know, that it's just like with your elderly. Yeah. Um, when I was taking care of my mom, I quit my job, and um, I went to apply to see if I could get some help. Mm -hmm. But you can't, you're family. And because I was family, yeah. they wouldn't give me not food stamps, no medical coupons, Nothing. and not one dime. That's but they would pay <coughs> someone else three thousand dollars to do the same thing to do what I was doing, and I was doing it for love. I went into total shock. Yeah. Now speaking of open, um, elderly, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna call nobody yeah, elderly. old today. No. <laughs> um, this is this has been really exciting for me. Um, I was asked to go and do talks in the nursing homes, and uh, the first one was on crop circles. The second one was on ufology, and the one I'm doing next month is on alien abduction. Mm -hmm. And we have a nursing home here in, in Olympia, Washington. I'm going to do a whole story there so I can talk to some of the, the, um, the residents there. They have their animals. They keep their cats and their dogs. They have a bar on Friday. That's mm -hmm. when I, where I come in and visit mm -hmm. with them. Um, Birds, meditation rooms, it is wonderful. Really? It's just wonderful wow. how, how they kind of allow them to, to stay in their own environment and don't have to get rid of that dog that they had for 30 years. Now, is it assistant living? No, or is it's it nursing a nursing home, home okay. and it's just wonderful. Mm -hmm. And wow. so on Fridays, once a month, I get to go and talk about aliens and That's things. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. They neat. got lots of stories. I bet they do. Because they want to tell it now. Mm -hmm. you know? They're older and... You know, sometimes yeah. as you get older, you don't feel, you feel freer to speak about yeah. things because you're not, first you don't care that much about what other people think anymore. Yeah. It doesn't affect your job or, you yeah. know, your living and things. So that's, that's really neat. It's wonderful. I would I was shy to thought of it. Because, you know, they, one of they, the they came to me and asked. That's it's wonderful. Because, you know, one of the problems for elderly is that a lot of places don't want them to bring their animal. No, nothing. And they've I've proven never heard that of it. They've mm -hmm. proven, I've read research where the elderly that have animals live longer yeah. and healthier. Yeah. And this is their research. The same ones that say, well, no, you can't have the animal. Yeah, it's just, it's just great. And know. then they charge for them, you know. It's just great. When, too, when, you know. When they also to. charge the, a lot of the elderly for, um, if they do allow them to have the animal, they charge so much a month for that animal. Yeah, now, when I was in Illinois here just a few weeks mm -hmm. ago, one of the nursing homes that I go to sometimes, they went bankrupt and they gave, they called everybody and gave everybody two days to remove everybody. Two how, how, days? Two days, so how do you do that? Oh, my goodness. It just closed that nursing home. The whole town was Two in days? Yeah, 
two days. They said, we're going to shut down in two days. We just filed bankruptcy and get everybody out of here. Seemed that was like, so cruel. Seemed like uh, somehow someone could have contacted a lawyer and stopped that. So gave more time, I mean. I don't know what happened after that. I wonder what but happened. It was just, yeah. That is horrible, yeah. especially elderly. Yeah. Because uh, right now in Roslyn, uh, my sister lives in a senior citizen housing, uh -huh. and she heard, and she, uh, and I believe, that's been bought by the resort that's coming in. Yeah, we talked about three the years resort, ago, yeah. and they're giving them at least three years to mm -hmm. get another place, but they're not going to find them. I mean, not the elderly aren't going to find a place. Yeah, the the people that yeah. are going to displace them are not yes. going to put any energy into helping yeah. them find a place. Yeah. It's up to, some of them are 90, some yeah. are on oxygen. Yeah. How are they going to go about finding a place? Yeah. You know? So, well, yeah. That's, so, that's about the same. It hasn't so changed too much. So by the time we're ready for the nursing home, <laughs> I I'm not ever, concerned. It'll probably be on the moon anyway, so. Then we're going to sit there and say about <laughs> things and like they used to be <laughs> because... <laughs> They never are. It's never going to happen, is it? <laughs> what? I'm not Nursing going. home? Yeah. Oh, I'll go because I'm going to the get moon. Old. We're just going to No, but I'm now. still going to the moon and I'll be in a nursing home there and it'll be fine. I'm going to do those wonderful moon shots. Yeah, oh, I want to say about something it. about the background that we have. And those are the, the, the cave drawings that come off, uh, that are from the wing makers. I should have said that earlier. Okay. They, um, these are caves that had. Um, time machines into the future and they had all these hieroglyphics and things and mm -hmm. other than the moon I think things you saw today was from the wing makers oh. yeah so um, so people still appreciate a little time traveling yeah and going, going you, ahead you know, in time that used to be in comics you know time travel wasn't a reality years yeah. ago yeah. So now it's reality, so it's quite different than it used to be. Have you watched some of the Star Treks lately? No, I haven't. Yeah, I, I was not a Trekkie. But uh, when I went to the new place, my antenna wasn't cooperating. And uh, <laughs> not having a budget, I couldn't do the cable thing. <laughs> I understand thing. that. So I ended up watching Star Trek in Deep Space Nine. And oh, how wonderful. I mean, you, you get so where you actually recognize the different species and you know what planet they come from and they have personalities and they have lives and what a wonderful way to mm. get us ready for the next phase <laughs> <laughs> but it's i really like it now mm -hmm. one of the things i was thinking about talking about things aren't like they used to be um i was thinking about i was watching tv and they were talking about the possibility which i think they're going to do of having people uh, uh, take pictures of their eyes at the airports. Mm -hmm. And this takes me way back because about 20 years ago, I knew a girl who uh, studied eyes and An read off of eyes called iridology. Yeah. She, and uh, unknown to people, the eyes are very powerful. They carry so much information. Yeah. And you, uh, looking into a camera and have your eyes taken look like something really simple, but it's not. It's not, yeah. It is a tracking that you will never, a microchip couldn't do. Right, because, because this it's girl, so individual. Mm -hmm. They're individual. No two people's yeah. eyes are the same. Right. This girl took a picture of my eyes. Mm -hmm. She told me about my parents. Mm -hmm. She told me about my grandparents. Yeah. I didn't know that about them until I checked with my mama. Yeah. And then she told me about my future. Yeah. And things that would go on, I mean... I'm against it. I don't like it. I hope people don't just think it's a simple thing, just getting your eyes, you know, camerized. Uh-uh, it's, it's, it's tracking. It's mm -hmm. tracking, and it's not cool. Yeah. And so I don't know that they have iridologists, you know, that's going to do the tracking, but believe me, it's better than, it's almost as good as a fingerprint. Yeah, I know um, yeah, we had a... I forgot what the name of the show was. We showed where sometimes, but sometimes circumstances can change your eye color, and that's what that show was all about. Okay, it was sure. called Green Eyes Wanderers. This person had went into a cave and encountered something, and his eye color changed, mm -hmm. and that was documented. So Yeah, that's true. I have a nephew, and his eyes are hazel. Mm -hmm. And under certain circumstances of temperament, mm -hmm. his eyes change to either green or brown completely. Now, now do you... There was a, 
a time when we had telephones that you could voice program. Yes. You just put a number in it, yeah. and then you say mom or dad or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, I couldn't use it very long because if I once would, because of my accent, it would get confused, especially if I had a cold, and it wouldn't work for me. So mm. the point I'm making here, now, with this whole tracking thing here, mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, what we think is a good idea it's really isn't always, because you know. it doesn't always work. And you're going like to get we locked think. out <laughs> like or we think, in. <laughs> you know, or the reason why people are doing this is the noise of the highest. Yeah. yeah. So that's something that's different, really different. But yeah. it took me way back, 20 years, when this girl, she used to do it to movie stars. Uh -huh. And of course, at that time, they had to, she couldn't tell. Yeah. You know, she couldn't broadcast it because, the, you know, working in that field wasn't... Um, acceptable then yeah yeah but uh, she used her and it was a machine that was pretty uh she could take it with her in the car yeah so they i'm sure they got it down now where it's really cool you know it's real sophisticated, yeah, it's yeah, real sophisticated them, yeah. now but it's not cool like people think mm -hmm. oh yeah we want to be we want everything secure now nah, and nah, the nah. other thing iridology does it can uh it it, it tells by dna what your yes. illnesses are where yes, are going to be and we're going to have to go again Okay, We've well, covered it's nice to meet planet. you and nice to talk with you again. So, um, we'll come see us yeah. next week. Stop by the market, the Lacey Farmers Market, uh, not Olympia, the Lacey Farmers Market for story ideas and keep bringing pictures and, and stuff and come see us next week. Okay, you have a safe trip home. I will. Okay, bye. You've got the right thing on too, it's cold outside. That's where it'll keep you warm. Yeah. Look. It's wonderful. Isn't it wonderful? Look That's at That's beautiful. Look at it. Wow. Yeah. That is beautiful. Wow.